Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com, and <laughs> we're going to go on a e-bike ride on some roads uh, that we've gone on before, but they were, the last time we went, they were uh, not paved, and so uh, <laughs> we're going to have some fun with that. Now, uh, it makes it nice, nice, it makes it nicer, okay. Oh, I gotta slow down here. So, uh, I have been going through my life story, telling things about my life, and putting them in the videos. And uh, so, if you're just new to the channel, uh, I have set up because I had a lot of people interested. I have set up a, a playlist called Life Story. If you go to my home page of my YouTube channel, and uh, up at the top, click on uh, playlists. Uh, it's in the playlist list. <laughs> uh, so you click on that, and that'll take you back to the very beginning. If you're if you're bored and have nothing else to do, uh, <laughs> you can start watching from the beginning, which was uh, oh several videos back. Anyway, so uh, what I uh, what I'm doing is just going through my life. I'm 82 years old, and telling stories about things that I remember and that I think were interesting. Uh, so, <clears throat> in the last video, I graduated from college, moved from Bellingham, Washington, where I was going to college, down to SeaTac uh, area, south of Seattle, and uh, <laughs> I uh, went out job hunting. Now, middle of the year, when you're in the teacher program, there's no jobs for teachers much that I could see that I was interested in. And so instead of, uh, uh, <laughs> instead of going for some job in New York or something like that, I just decided that I would um, wait until fall and then find me a teaching job. And so I, uh, in the meantime, I needed to find a job. We were living with my folks there and uh, uh, hadn't bought a house yet. And so uh, uh, I had to find a job. Well, uh, I got a job working for Boeing. And if you want to see how that went, <laughs> go to the previous video, which I'll put a link to at the end of the video here. So <clears throat> I, got, I got my job at Boeing. And uh, on the first day, they, what they did was uh, they hired me to be a draftsman. I got to explain all this to you because some of you don't know what a draftsman was. See, back in the old days before computers, and this was back in the old days, uh, if you wanted to make a, 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 a drawing of um, how to make something or how to build something, you did it by hand. And that was, uh, guys that did that were called draftsmen. And so they hired me as a, as a draftsman. They didn't have, you know, CAD machines, computer-assisted computer -assisted, uh, drafting or drawing. And so they hired me as a draftsman. And uh, then they had this 12-week course where they taught you how to uh, do drawings the way Boeing wanted them done. And so uh, I hope I don't get lost here. <laughs> anyway, I, get lo I, I got mixed up in this community one time. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and see if we can find a road into town yet that's okay to use. So anyway, uh, so first day, uh, I went in and uh, uh, sat down at one of the, you know, a drafting table. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a big table where you lay your paper out on and uh, you draw, you know, make your drawing. And uh, you use uh, instruments like triangles and T-squares and stuff like that. So uh, I sat down and, and the guy came around and handed out some... Uh, the uh, teacher came around, handed out some uh, uh, cards for us to fill out, you know, name, address, phone number, all that kind of stuff. And so I just kind of slopped it out. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't know I had to be real careful of, anyway. So uh, <clears throat> took it up, turned it in. And he was, we were sitting there and uh, he goes through the cards and he calls me up to the front. And he says, now... I see how you filled out this card and 
uh, just so you'll know, you can't be that sloppy when it comes to drafting. You have to be much neater with your lettering. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I had been, when I was uh, in college, I was an art minor, and I took a lot of, or I took a uh, calligra, calligra, callig calligra calligraphy. I got it. Anyway, I took a course in that and did a whole bunch of uh, see back in those days when there was no computer if you wanted a different font you drew you you lettered with a different font and sometimes you had to have a special pen and you always did it with India ink uh, and so uh, I had done that but when I filled out that cord I didn't really that card I really I really wasn't in, too interested in being neat so he corrected me on that, you know, and I thought, okay. So uh, anyway, so then he started teaching, and all we had to work with uh, in that class was a 45-degree triangle and a 30-degree triangle. I'll try to get some pictures up to show you what they look like. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, that's what we started out with. Well, after about two or three days of drafting, uh, I, I don't know, I can't remember details that well. Anyway, after a while, several days, uh, he said, uh, you know, because I had just graduated from college as a drafting teacher, <laughs> and he came up to me and he said, you're doing well enough, uh, you could actually teach this stuff. And he said, I'm going to take you to my supervisor and see if we can hire you to be a teacher because like I said before, they were building up for the C-5A transport and uh, they needed to build up their crew, so they needed teachers. So anyway, uh, so he took me to his supervisor and we went, we went uh, to some, you know, it was, I don't remember where we went. Anyway, we, went, we got to his uh, office and he was telling the guy how I already knew everything that they that he was teaching and uh, so I could actually be a teacher at and so <laughs> this job at Boeing is going to take more than one video I think and so uh, his uh, instructor said well the only problem is before you can do any instructing at Boeing you have to have worked here for two years. And of course, that, that uh, meant I couldn't be, a, be an instructor. So he took me back to the classroom and I sat in there for, uh, it, it was a 12 week class, but at the end of the second week, uh, he said, you're, you're good enough, you don't need to stay in this class. So he took me to the, um, <laughs> engineering building and uh, took me upstairs and took me to the area where I would be working and so because uh, I was going to be working in what they call passenger accommodations and that means you design stuff for the for the inside of the of the aircraft so everything inside the aircraft and so you design stuff for that. So he introduced me to my future boss, and uh, and so then he went off and and uh, went back to teaching. Let's see if they got this road done. Oh, this road's it's looking pretty good. I hope. Well, I looks to me looking down the road here, it doesn't look like we'll be able to use it yet, because. Uh, I see some roadblocks down there, like we just went through. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so I went to work in passenger accommodations. Had a super nice guy to work for, and uh, so uh, he he had been told all about me. So he said, uh, "You want to design uh, an object for uh, for an airplane?" I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, you know," and so. Uh, he he showed me what I needed to do. It needed it needed to be, and he was I don't know if he was, I think he was testing me. It needed to be uh, 
between two uh, let's let's just slow down for a second it needed to be two between two pieces of metal that came together like this to brace them at at the yoke there and so uh <laughs> and so uh uh i had to design the thing that would go in there but he said we're just going to make it out of wood just for fun and so i can go through there and we can go to the park so that'll be one of the things we're going to do soon so anyway um so i sat down now i had in college i had a real he was an old guy but he was a really good instructor and he taught me how to use what's called descriptive geometry in other words uh it makes you can get a view of any object from any angle in your drawing and create a drawing of it uh, from any angle and that's what I needed to use in order to uh, design that <laughs> and so uh, I sat down and and by the way uh, we were using triangles is all we were using uh, or all I had anyway and I looked around the other draftsmen had drafting machines and I'll try to put a picture of drafting machines up there for you to see anyway um, so I did with my triangles I designed uh, a block that would fit uh, between those two pieces and hold them together and uh, it took me a day or so and I turned it in and he said okay well then they had uh, another thing that they had was what they called uh, DCN, it's a drawing change notice. In other words, they go out to the factory. Yeah, this is going to have to take more than one video. They would go out to the, or the, the guys at the factory would have, would redesign something because it really didn't fit the way it was designed. So then they'd make a note, a drawing change notice. And then they'd send that up to the engineering department. We'd pull out the drawing for that piece, and we would um, uh, make the change on the drawing to match what it, they really do. And so uh, drawing change notices were very boring. But I did a couple of those. And, uh, and then as time went by, my boss decided that... Uh, I was going to do a lot of design work. In fact, <laughs> uh, there were some engineers that, uh, how they got their engineering degree, I don't know, but they didn't have, didn't know how to do hardly anything working in that department before I ever got there. I don't know how long they worked, but uh, uh, so he would have me go over and stand next to them and show them what they had to do in order to do whatever they were trying to design so i i was a tut a tutor <laughs> to some of the engineers there at boeing and so uh i did that and then um uh, he had me maybe this would be a little longer video he had me uh go out into the factory and do some measurements inside of a plane that's already being manufactured so I had to crawl up the ladder, get inside the fuselage, crawl underneath where the floor would go, do things like that in my suit. Actually, it wasn't a suit, it was a, you know, a tie. You had a shirt and tie and good, good looking clothes. And so uh, he had me doing that. And the first time I did that, <laughs> uh, when I was in college, I picked up the habit of smoking a pipe. <laughs> And so in, in the engineering department, you could sit there and smoke while you were drawing. But uh, out in the factory, there was no smoking. Well, I didn't know that. I was new. So I light up my pipe and I got my note paper and my pad and all that stuff. And I'm heading out to, to climb into an airplane. And uh, <laughs> this guy, this uh, officer, walks up to me and says, Hey, young man, <laughs> we don't smoke in here. Go put your pipe out and showed me where to put my pipe out so that was a little bit embarrassing nobody told me you couldn't smoke in the in the uh, factory so <clears throat> anyway uh <laughs> so i worked there from january and uh, worked there eight months for what was it 
and I found a job teaching in Pasco, Washington. And uh, so I applied for it and uh, went over and interviewed for it. Came back to Pas came back to Seattle, uh, working for Boeing. I turned in my termination slip. By that time, all the way, also I had a drafting machine. I was really up. I was like an engineer. I was I was in doing engineering drawings actually, and I don't want to get into too much detail, but I was doing advanced stuff. And so uh, anyway, I turned in my termination. Well, then the next day I get this note that I'm supposed to go see the project engineer for the 707. Now, the project engineer at Boeing, <laughs> that's the top man, the very top man in charge of the 707 jet. And uh, so uh, they told me how to get to his office and everything. I walked into his office and <laughs> All he had, he had this big long table for having meetings with guys. No chairs, just a big long table. And he was on the, as I came in the door, he was on the far side of the table. And he had a, uh, like a, a pad down that you could write notes on. It not, I mean, just a, a pad, you know, for desktop. And he had a phone on one side and he had a paper, a pencil and pen uh, holder on the other side. That's all he had on his table. <laughs> and he says, I understand you're quitting. Uh, I said, yeah. He says, how come? I said, well, because I went to college to become a teacher. Now, if you remember way back to when I was telling my beginning, I didn't go to college to become a teacher. I didn't have any idea what I was going to be. <laughs> so anyway, I uh, hope I don't get lost in here. Let's see. I gotta go this way. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I said I become to become a teacher, and so he says, "Well, we would like you to stay, and we've got a raise for you if you will stay." <laughs> I said, "No, I'm. I already had my application in. I was, you know, technically hired as a teacher in Pasco, Washington, down in the southeast corner of the state." So anyway. Um, he said, okay, well, we hate to see you go. And uh, so I worked there for eight months. They treated me special, they liked me. And uh, there were times in my life I just couldn't remember that guy's name. I'd call him up and say, yeah, I'll go back and work for you. <laughs> you know, I uh, run into times and think I never should have done this, I should have stayed there. Well, anyway, I didn't, so. Uh, that's my story of working at Boeing. And the uh, next story is gonna be moving from Seattle, Washington to Pasco, Washington. And that was an exciting thing, especially in my 1941 pickup. So at that, I'll say thank you for watching my videos and God bless.